everybody, Carson here. I'm going to do an end of the year book tour. I think this year for me especially is the first year, well, last year and a half maybe, since I got the, the job here in Alabama and moved. It's the first time I've had bookshelves since, I don't know, 20... 2004 or something like that. I don't know. As a kid, I had always had a lot of bookshelves, but then I um, I got married young and we had bookshelves for a while, but we moved so much and then I got divorced and there was a period of time where I moved 15 times in 10 years. So I got very wary of having physical books. There was a few things that were stashed, a couple boxes that were stashed at my parents' house for like 15 years or something as I moved around. Um, but I just always got my comics digitally and the things, things that I couldn't like buy digitally, I would get physical copies of that if it was something I really cared about, but other stuff I would just let go because I didn't have money and I didn't have the space to put it. So when I moved to Alabama, that was my intention was to continue just buying the things I couldn't get a hold of digitally. Um, but Tori took me to Second and Charles and which we'd never heard of because we're from California, um, which doesn't have good bookstores, at least where I'm from at where I was from. And it, she just bought me a bunch of books. Uh, she likes having bookshelves. So I think it was an intentional, like knowing she was going to reignite my bug. And cause I've, I've been making good money this, this last couple years and stuff gone a little crazy. So now all of a sudden I have a ton of bookshelves. So I wanted to just share that and kind of be excited about the fact that I have bookshelves. So we'll just go through, um, not a bookshelf, but something to brag on. This is one of my prized possessions it's actually a painting by who i consider the best trompe l'oeil painter of all time anthony wachulis i got it in an in an auction and i paid about two thousand dollars for that and i bought that when i was pretty poor still <laughs> but i'd saved up some money and uh that that seemed like uh he's he's one of my favorite painters and i think the best painter to do that type of thing ever so i thought that was worth the expenditure even though it was foolish of me at the time anyways uh these are the bookshelves in my office which is where i'm always working running my classes recording the videos that you normally see up top i have a bunch of the strange death of alex raymond these are the misprint copies that i drew sketches in let's see these will be on the channel soon whenever we decide to run the auctions on these on the misprinted pages oh this is gonna fall i did some sketches so i have videos of myself there we go making the sketches and those will be up for auction so those are just hanging out upstairs i just got and we'll be doing a review of Ohm by Andy Barron, but I guess I accidentally ordered two copies. I didn't realize that it hadn't come out yet, and I was wondering where my copy was, and I couldn't find the email. So we'll be figuring out a reason to give away this. Um, over the years, I've collected the Best American Comics. That was something I was very into. I don't think I have the last one or two because they went digital. So these are just the compilation stuff. Um... This is a book we reviewed. Stuck Rubber Baby, I was very glad to get this year. Black Hole by Charles Burns. Alex Robinson stuff. A lot of these things are things you've seen on the channel. The Last Man series, this is something I grabbed this year. Bastien Vivez, really like that. Sean got me on the Yoshiharo Suge and the Mizuki. I uh, really enjoyed the Drifting Classroom. JoJo's is something that will probably eventually get all of those. This was the first Junji Ito book I ever enjoyed. Um, most of his stuff grosses me out, but maybe we'll talk about, I've got sticky notes in it so we can talk about that. Gyo was one I tried and I just thought it was disgusting. Fist of the North Star was a series that we started on the channel. Um, this is a book I was really happy to get. It's a good life if you don't weaken by Seth. Something I grabbed at Second Charles, Paul Chadwick's Concrete. I'll grab more of those. Fun Home by Allison Bechtel is something that we're going to review. I got this for the review. The Girl from Hoppers. 
really happy about this series low this is just a bunch of random mostly random stuff that i've grabbed at second and charles the apple seed books because uh, we're still going to be reviewing those with brandon all of brandon's work just a bunch of other random random books that i've got these some of the here's super mag by Jim Rugg. Um, these are things my uncle gave me a long time ago. Some really cool collections of work. I think that's Wally Wood. Um, Evan Glenn's Bomb. That was one of the, the best books this year. I got a Corto Maltese. Th this is a series I want to have Sean look at uh, eventually because he's never seen these. The Scoyton and Peter's The Obscure Cities. I think I have all of them that have been put out in English. These are ones that I bought a long, long time ago, most of them, and have held on to them. There's some books that I've held on to over the years. Um, I'm trying to find the other. I found both of these Charles Burns books, uh, that second of Charles, and there's a third one. This is the Samurai Shelf. Uh, eventually, this is going to have to be two shelves. I just started getting these. Number two's on the way. Numbers... 5, 9, 11, and 12 seem to be out of print, so I got what I can because they seem to cycle in and out of print. Um, I would love if Vagabond got redone like these big Blade of the Immortal and Berserk books, but I'm assuming Blade of the Immortal will eventually be a whole shelf and Vagabond will be a whole shelf. It's a problem with this. Is like, I don't have any place to put any more bookshelves. Um, these are, this is my big-ass books bookshelf. An Alphonse Mucha book that, that Tori had. Uh, I had one as well. I don't know if we still have that. This is Al Williamson's Empire Strikes Back. I got that um, from IDW when I was doing Strange Death of Alex Raymond just to help me learn the style. The Ronin Artist Edition by Frank Miller. The Chris Chris Ware monograph. This is one that I one of those ones is like had to buy and just store at my parents' house. Uh, Jim Lee's X Men. I had to get that when that came out this year because that was X Men number one's the reason I got into comics in the first place. Any Chris Ware stuff I always get. Building stories uh, in the shadow of no towers. This two set history of graphic design. Um, when I started teaching graphic design, I got a bunch of books on that. So some of these are art books, painting today. Sean sent me these two, Masters of American Comics and Manga, which are just cool compilations of artists. Um, this is Jules Pfeiffer, like a trio. I really did not like those, but I got them super cheap. These are old. This is all my Frank Miller stuff. I would still like to get uh, Jeff Darrow's other work in hardcover like this. I have this gigantic big guy um, that I've had forever, but I don't have a color version or one with lettering. And I know he has his uh, Shell and Cowboy in these hardcovers, but they're all out of print. I would love to have all of Darrow's work like this. Uh, Year One and then all the Sin City books. I would get that big, that big uh, collection of all the Sin City. Eventually I'll get that. Um, the Yodorowsky stuff. Me and Sean should look at the ink all. All the Kripa. Hopefully they'll reprint volume one. This is a book that I've had for a long time. A gal I was dating a long time ago worked at a used bookstore and got me this compilation of stuff from um, the Smithsonian collection of newspaper comics. It's just a big one of my sketchbooks. This is like my Dave McKean section from here to here. I pretty much got all his stuff except Signal to Noise, I think. All his major works. Uh, Monsters, which we reviewed. Cerebus. The Fountain. This Tori and I both love this movie and this book. Then this is like the Ashley Wood stuff here. Um, Automatic Kafka. I'm interested if they have a print, a reprint, a trade paperback of that. That's a series I've always held on to the single issues. I gave away so many of my comics because I couldn't haul them around. But the ones that seemed like I wouldn't be able to get, I held on to in single issues. And that was a series I really enjoyed. So that's all Ashley Wood stuff. You can maybe understand my categories. They're loose, but Dave McKean and Ashley Wood seem similar. 
Um, this is all the Manuel Fior stuff that I picked up this year. That, that someone I uh, found out about this year. This is the Bastian Vives section. Besides the the Action Man stuff over there, um, probably my my favorite, one of my favorite European artists. Hoping to get the rest of the Black Sad. Stan Drake's Kelly Green. This is a must-have. This is another one I got while working on Strange Death. Uh, in terms of learning the styles then the berserk shelf and i'm sure i'll need another shelf for those eventually this is the ennio asano shelf um definitely one of my two favorite manga artists so i think i've got everything by him except for what a wonderful world number one which is out of print um dead dead demon will be ending soon and i look forward to whatever he's doing next there's the Cerebus. I'm missing a couple of the reprints I'll have to order. Uh, the Akira. That was the box set. I got. I know it's heresy, but I got rid of the box because I don't like that. But at least I kept the, the covers on those. Um, this started out as my like book bookshelf, but it's turning into a comic shelf. I just got these in the mail, and they they came while I was on vacation, and we had a tornado warning level storm. So my Topi Bible and volume six and seven of Blood on the Tracks, which is another one of my favorite mangas that I've just discovered recently, those got drenched. <laughs> so those will be coming from Amazon. Replacements, sketchbook, the modern illustrating series that I grabbed that we're scanning. Well, that is a special thing that needs to go to a special backer. Apologies, Brian. Um, this is the the Nagabe. I threw away the one the one love on the other side that I didn't like, but this is the girl from the other side. Just finished it. Really enjoy that. Um, this is the Jimmy Gownley stuff I'm still reading, and and the Fist of the North Star three that I I'm still reading. Some new favorite manga, the Sigaterra and the Blood on the Tracks series. The whole Barefoot Gin, which is a rough read, but necessary, I think. Um, this is what this bookshelf was originally intended for, is my, like actual book books. Uh, these are things that I picked up in Michigan. Sean's book, Down in the Hole, by Sean Robinson and Joy DeLira. Talk about that on an episode before the manga manga book sean sent me um shannon wheeler sent me these books here uh, we sent him a strange death of alex raymond some of these are books tori had so i know i've said on the channel i've never read this book and i've still never read it even though i have it i need to read that um some art books phil hale with john j muth sean sent me this as well forged uh, then these are like my art and philosophy books. So a lot of just research that I've done over the years for my classes about neuroaesthetics, how uh, ne like neuroscience and art overlap is something I'm very interested in. So Science of Illusion. This one's a hardcore academic book. Um, Natural History of Scene, which was a really cool book. Highly recommend that. Some philosophy books about art, author Danto, The Body, Body Problem. I haven't read that in a long time. James Elkins is one of my favorite art writers. So the art stares back and what painting is. And I, I have another one or had another one called Why Our Pictures Are Puzzles that are really good. These are, these are really good. He's a really great author. Uh, Michelle Foucault. C.S. Lewis, those are interesting to have right together. This is actually one of the most influential books in my thinking, the series of essays by C.S. Lewis, The Abolition of Man. I think he has it exactly right about where technology is going to take us, and that's in this book. Um, this was another, Programming the Universe is another essential book to my view of the world by Seth Lloyd. Uh, talking about the universe as a quantum computer. This book is a really rare and hard to find book by Abraham Molez, Information Theory and Aesthetic Perception. And I, at some point I was planning on writing my own theory of aesthetics, 
but <laughs> filtered through the philosophy of information, but that's never going to happen. Um, information and digital art research. And then the most important writer of our times, I, most important philosopher of our times, Luciano Floridi. I have most, I have all of his works and papers and stuff digitally, but I have, I have this one physically. Um, yeah, it, he's the most important thinker of our time and people should own all of his works. This is my sketchbooks. People keep buying me <laughs> sketchbooks as gifts. Uh, man watching from Sean, some pen and ink stuff that we've picked up. Um, just some drawing, some, most of these came from Tori actually drawing books, but I am stealing project ideas out of them. For my students, Kent Williams, Klimt. Here's my Mucha, Mucha book. Um, just some legal stuff. Visual Explanation. This is a really good book for cartoonists by Edward Tufte. Artists and designers. And then uh, other stuff when I started teaching graphic design. Since I'm not a... My degree's not in graphic design, especially Meg's history of graphic design helped me put together my my history of graphic design lectures. A lot of the books that I got that were supposed to be history of graphic design, like these ones, uh, we'll go back over here. Sorry for the sickening cabin movement. Um, I was like, okay, I'm going to teach the history of graphic design. I'm going to get these gigantic books. And there's no, it's just pictures. And I found that I'll just say a little bit about the artist, but there it wasn't like a written history that put it together in a comprehensible way that I could distill for students. And I found that to be the problem with almost every history of graphic design book I picked up is graphic designers are so interested in visual that they didn't actually give any useful written information. So uh, Meg's history of graphic design. We'll do the spin again. This is the only history book I could find that was actually useful and distillable for students. Okay, that's the office. Okay, in the living room where we have a couple puppy dogs recovering from their Christmas stay at the kennel. I think they picked up a little cold from the other puppies. This is our, I guess, main bookshelf that me and Tori share. It's like five crappy bookshelves from Walmart that we screwed together to make it look like one big bookshelf. So Tori's stuff is all the top half, the top three sections, and then all my comics are on the bottom. Um, out of her books, well, we have like this collection of classics, which are nice, um, and then picked up a complete Lovecraft. She has a complete Poe. I bought her this recently. Kafka on the Shore in a really limited edition um, from the Folio Society. It's a really nice book. Um, and this is one of her, her favorite books of all time. So when I saw that they had this really nice, let's see, illustrated version with actually some cool comic-like pages in it, um, I got her that because I know it's one of her top three books when we first started dating it was like what you know what are your top three books and tried to read those to get to know each other so I and I saw that um, had to grab that I'll put that back later the rest of her stuff probably thinks she'd be embarrassed if I showed you in science science stuff this is uh, my no brow press this is the publisher that I really fell in love with this last year and I'll continue getting pretty much anything that they put out and try and go back and get anything. This, the rest of this stuff is just random stuff. Mostly things that I'm sticking in here are really colorful. I guess that's how I'm categorizing it. Or um, this is kind of like the, the females, I guess, that I really like. Tilly Walden, Manji Thop, Gigi... Um, Jillian Tamaki, like they kind of all have this similar vibe to me that I like. Uh, these books are all these really like colorful, like the Anna Galvin, where they almost have these fluorescent colors. I've been sticking those together. Uh, John Pham. It seems to be like a vibe, so I'm just sticking those together for the vibe. 
this is probably some other stuff that I should review at some point. 3D Sweeties. I really liked that book. Um, this one, I, I like the art, but the stories, I don't know. I was in a bad mood today. I read them. I'll have to go back to it. Uh, this shelf's kind of like maybe formalist stuff and just some other random stuff that fit. But a lot of like Will Eisner and instructional books like Eisner's instructional books. Um, under Perspective for Comic Book Artists by David Chelsea, which I give all my students. Unflat Name by Nick Susanis, we need to review that. Scott McCloud stuff, Mouse, you know, so just like the classics. And then other formalist stuff like the Gigantic Beard that was evil. And just other small stuff that fit in here. Random stuff that I've got over the years. Here's a lot of like small, let's see what I got in here. Just small weird stuff. Um, the Salmon Run that I show, or not Salmon Run, that's, this is Salmon Run by, um, a guy I went to school with, McKenzie. 1-800-GHOSTS, Optic Nerve, just little, here's the old, old school, Cyber Force and the Max, oh, it's signed, number 143. Um, these little, what did they used to call these? I don't know. These little books that they used to make. Ash cans. These little ash cans that they used to make to promote books. This is one a student made. Jim Lee's Fantastic Four. One of 2000 that they made. This is my friend Mark Ramey's Brain Nuggets. So that's that kind of stuff. Stuff that's more like, uh, Map Taglia's Ghost of the Carousel, the... The stuff by Epoch, just um, smaller things I picked up, Evan Cohen's. So that's kind of what's on this shelf. And then the rest of the shelf is all stuff that I'm I'm in, just catalogs from shows I've been in, um, books like my Nephilim that I printed, Pit Crew number two, which was the first illustration I ever had published, some fan art, Ink Punk's Quarterly, which was... Robert Kirkman's company, Funkatron, published this. And I had some art in, not that one, but I did some pages in this one. That was like my first kind of pro work ever. More of the Nephilim. And then just different books I've made throughout the years. And my stuff with Dave, Strange Death. Over here, this is the Alan Moore section. Uh, definitely not complete. I don't know that will be complete because when I read Jerusalem, uh, it retroactively ruined my opinion of almost everything by Alan Moore. I, I don't know why, but I've seen most of his stuff as childish now. I still really like From Hell. Um, one of my favorite comics of all time was Promethea, and I still just have it in single issues because uh, I, I can't get the absolute editions, and I'd really just like the, the double-fold spread omnibus edition that they never printed, but also just the nostalgia. I'm scared to read it, though. I'm scared I'll find it to be, you know, 20-year-old stuff, not 40-year-old not stuff. And then other just kind of random stuff, Asteros Polyp, The Fall, Peter Kruipers, The System, more formless books. Up here is more, like, superhero stuff. This is all my Sam Keith stuff. Um, I never got a complete set of the Max. So I'll have to complete that. I, luckily that, that I found Zero Girl, but there's a lot of his stuff I don't have. Jay Lee's Hell Shock. That was probably like the first really serious comic I read. The second one of that. What else do we got? Talk Fetch. That's some cool stuff that I've held on to. An early photo realist that I really liked. Cerebus number or spawn number 10. I don't know why I had her kept that one. I wasn't into Cerebus at the time. Um, Travis Charest's Wildcats X Men Golden Age that really changed how I looked at art. So I've kept hang on things that are special and just a lot of like uh, other more standard. Here's like Sean Gordon Murphy, who I really like some of his work. Head Lopper, I'll get all those eventually. I need to get more Paul Pope stuff. This is Kabuki. I really want to go back and look at Kabuki with Sean, but I think I have every Kabuki thing. It's just not all collected. I have some of them in single issues. And then just some uh, superhero stuff I've picked up when I've seen it cheap. Tom King, 
Um, I really like his run on the Vision. And I've grabbed a couple of his other stuff, but I haven't liked anything else as much. Uh, over here is like the kid-friendly shelf, so when Jack visits, he knows he can grab anything off of this shelf. I've got, oh, and Rosell, but I put that not on the kid-friendly shelf. So this is like the Jeff Smith section, um, a lot of Raina Telgemeier, just stuff that I've been picking up over the, the last year that's kid-friendly. Um, here's the Kirkman shelf, so the entire run of Walking Dead, which I just completed, and then just, uh, just, just this week got the final three volumes of the Invincible collection, so that goes to there. The full collection of Infinity 8 and Wacomo by Magnetic Press, another, another company that I've been really, really impressed by their works. Just got this one as well and want to review it, The Golden Age by Cyril Pedrosa, I think. Then the Mort Cinder. So these are like my badasses of ink over here. That's how I think of this. Um, the Alberto Breccia Mort Cinder. I don't like the rest of Breccia's stuff that I've seen, um, but I really like the art in that. Sergio Topi got really lucky and was able to find this for 14 bucks at Second and Charles. I think it's normally like 80 bucks. A little beat up in the corner, but... I think that's all the topi you can get in English right now. Uh, up here, more mostly kid-friendly stuff. My Jiro Taniguchi section, which I hope will continue to grow. Um, this is the Jimmy Gownley section. This is the Naoki Urasawa, which will continue to grow. Just got these, the complete tin tin. Um, these are really small. <laughs> for how dense the art and the the tiny the lettering is but cool to have a complete tin tin that when i was a kid and would go to the library was this is probably the first comic i ever read was tin tin and garfield getting those from the library um so continuing with the masters of ink section this is all of the stuff that I got uh, either IDW sent most of these to me or um, Dave paid for them, most of it, not all of it, but research for Strange Death of Alex Raymond. So we have Stan Drake's Heart of Juliet Jones. A lot of these are by Classic Comics Press. I hope Classic Comics Press keeps going because these Heart of Juliet Jones are beautiful. The entire Leonard Star Mary Perkins on stage, which is absolutely phenomenal like really literate work by far the best writing like actually really readable interesting adult stories in a lot of these compared to a lot of these other old strips the uh, first big ben bolt i hope classic comics press keeps going because john colin murphy just keeps getting better in that series from what i saw um just a research book on Raymond's life, the whole Rip Kirby, and then this is the Al Williams stuff. So the Secret Agent X9 and the two volumes of the Star Wars collections that Williams Williamson did. Um, so those those were all invaluable in learning how to do the style for Strange Death of Alex Raymond. And then this is my, I don't know, total auteur section. There's just two guys that are in a class of their own, I think, and have a ton of product. So this is all the Chris Ware stuff I have. I think I've got most of it. I don't I don't think I think I'm missing one of his sketchbooks. And I don't have all of the individual um Acme novelty libraries because he always winds up collecting them. So I was buying these ones when they came out, but he's now collected that in Rusty Brown. I wish I had the hardcover of Jimmy Corgan, but the fold out from that luckily is in that big monograph book, so less imperative. Cause that was the thing that I've, I, I checked this book out from in hardcover from the library and saw that big crazy multi-directional comic that he has in the, the when you unfold the dust cover. This is a dust cover I'll keep. Chris Ware knows how to make a dust cover I'll keep. That original rust, or uh, uh, Jimmy Corgan dust cover is one of the most impressive comics I've ever seen. Uh, so 
I was glad that, that they collected that in monograph. And then this is all the Michael DeForge. And I think I got all of Michael DeForge's stuff. And we'll continue to get all of his stuff. Because he's another one of those guys that's just so on his own thing in a league of his own. Ant is by far my favorite favorite book by him. So that's the living room. Oh, and then I have up here, actually, these aren't comics, but to me they are graphic novels. I'm really fascinated by books that really justify themselves as physical objects. I think, like, you know, uh, if I go over and just grab, like, some book off of Tori's shelf, some novel. Well, I don't know. These are all science books. But, like, if I grab a Stephen King book, I can just read that on my tablet very happily. There's no reason to be a physical book. Um, and I'm forgetting, I think it's called ergodic literature. I have a friend, we'll maybe have to interview him, who has a PhD in this type of fiction, and a lot of these are on his recommendations. But books that really justify themselves as books and are formally really compelling. So huge fan of Mark Z. Danielowski, starting with House of Leaves. Uh, when I read that in college, that absolutely blew my mind. I think I read it pretty much when it came out. When did this come out? 2000? No, 2000. I probably read that like 2003, and that blew my mind. And I think I have most of his stuff. Um, the Little Blue Kite is really cool. I'll do some some reviews of all the books on this shelf. Except, I think House of Leaves I can probably leave alone. The 50-Year Sword. Um... So he's an he's a if you don't know him I'm assuming most people know him but he's someone that involves pictures in his books or design um, typesetting play with typesetting he'll make pictures with the type and it's all meaningful. Only Revolutions, which is a flip book, and me and Tori both have a copy. So it's it's meant to be it's two characters that cross over and then really sad that there's only five. This was supposed to be a 27-volume project, uh, but he only made it to five. Hopefully, they'll kickstart it or NFT or something because these are really touching and amazing books, but also really formally compelling. His Whale Stow Letters, which is related to House of Leaves. And then these books, I'll do videos for all of these. Ryan Hughes' XX, Zhu Bing's From Point to Point, um, S, The Ship of Theseus by, uh, what's that guy's name? J.J. Abrams. Richard McGuire's here. Even though it's a comic book, I put it up on the shelf because it's so, like, having the fold in the book is such part of the architecture. Warren Lair's The Rise and Fall of Blue Mobley. And then a couple kids' books um, that are really clever. Mo Willems, We Are in a Book, and The Book with No Pictures. So I, I'll record videos of of most of these because if people have recommendations of more books like this um, that's something I would definitely definitely like and this is Tori's office in our dining area kind of a mess we just got back from California and we've stashed we're running out of shelf space and I don't know what we're gonna do this next year because most of this stuff at least my stuff and probably about uh, third of her stuff is all things that we've picked up this last year going to used bookstores the second and charles that john john king bookstore so whew, i don't know i don't know where we're going to put more bookshelves uh, we got some space on here but again the top three are her shelves and then the bottom two are mine um, worth pointing out because of strange death of alex raymond and because it's still all over the place, we're just in the airport, and this book is in the airport. Everywhere we go, like, Circe is right up front, which, if you've read Strange Death Ox Raymond, you'll know is a bit unsettling for me. And Tori really wanted to read it, and she was scared to bring it into the house, because if you've read Strange Death of Alex Raymond, you'll know why. Um, but eventually I said, okay, I can handle having it in the house. And she read it and really liked it, and... Gave it to me to read, and I just found it boring. It at least wasn't what I feared it would be. Um, here's my growing Tezuka shelf. There's These shelves have some more room on it. Um, the Buddha was the one that I really wanted to get. 
the complete version of and I just had to piece it together you know some used books it's too bad this isn't easy to get anymore uh, so they're kind of beat up the hard covers but these are nice um, I was glad to read it not as good as I thought Ode to Kirohito is a book I've had for a long long time and I reread it and by far the best Tezuka thing I've read out of the ones on the shelf and the, the Phoenix stuff that we've read this is his best work so I'm gonna try and get Sean to read that and we'll look at that um this is the Batman shelf I got I like the black and white stuff really like this new J.H. Williams omnibus um just some other random stuff that I picked up like at Ollie's and Second and Charles this is Wonder Woman Superman stuff Jim Lee stuff over there uh Anything with Jim Lee, I'm going to grab if I can, because he was my original inspiration. Uh, some more random stuff. This is the Jim Rugg shelf. The Octobriana and Super Mag are over in my room. Some of the stuff I put, I can't keep it all together, because we want to make sure if Jack grabs random stuff on the sh off the shelf, uh, it's appropriate. So this is most of the Jim Rugg stuff, a David B. book. I like his art. I've never liked any of his stories. Um, I've been grabbing these at Ollie's, the Fables hardcovers. There's a couple of them that they've had cheap. I would like the whole set eventually. And all my old Sandman stuff. I've always kept this, which I'm glad I did because I've seen these new absolutes and stuff and they've recolored them and I don't like it. I would like to have those nice, big, beautiful books, but I don't know. I like the old coloring. Uh, some more big books. Complete Little Nemo. I've had that for a long time. Alex Ross's big books. I've kept, I've held on to those over the years. Really happy that in this last year I found this Barry Windsor Smith stuff. I wish they would do Paradox, man. I don't think they ever did. Adastra in Africa. Um, too Much Coffee, man. Just some bigger stuff that I've found in the last year. I would really like the hardcover version of the Matt Fraction Hawkeye, but was really happy they at least put out a collected version. Some other Brian Bendis and Daredevil stuff that I've grabbed. Um, here's my <laughs> my original X-Men number one. This is my original Jim Lee run on X-Men. I don't know. I don't think I have the whole run anymore. I'm missing number four. And number seven and nine. I don't know what happened to those books, but... Those are the ones that I was buying from the comic shop or off the grocery store stand when they were coming out. And then the second of the two omnibus from Jim Lee. And I this one, Moon Knight by Sienkiewicz, uh, I, I grabbed that at Second and Charles just because they had it half off. But I don't know. I, I could see how at the time the art was really impressive, but going back, it's not that interesting to me. Uh, but it's cool to have. I'm not I'm not huge into these unless they're an artist I really like. I don't really care about the characters enough to be going and buying the complete runs. Um, and then this is, and you've probably noticed that in the way I'm organizing things. This is my Trad Moore section. He's he's probably my favorite artist working in like for the big two. Um, I was really really happy to find this oversized version of the Silver Surfer. And I don't know what he's doing next, but whatever it is, I look forward to it. And I will buy big hardcover versions of anything by Trad Moore. So that's that's my collection as of now. Uh, like I said, the majority of these things have been added this year. We went a little crazy uh, doing the channel is kind of giving me an excuse to continue buying all the new stuff that looks interesting to me. And then then going to Ollie's and Second and Charles, I just always stock up on some of these older things that that I want. So I'm sure by next year this will, I don't know, I don't know where we'll put everything, but it will probably double, double the amount that I've got. So thanks for following along. Um, I know there's a bunch of stuff in here that we haven't talked about on the channel yet. So if you saw stuff that you really want me to review or that you want me and Sean to look at together, let me know what books jumped out to you. And we'll be happy to talk about them. 
And if you want to guarantee that stuff gets looked at on the Patreon, we have probably bi-monthly votes where patrons will select, uh, collectively select something. The max was the first one that we did, and we'll, we'll continue to do that as we have time given everything else that we have going on. So that's a way for people to take a little bit more control over what we look at. All right. Close out. 2021 here's to a better 2022 for everyone have a great new year's